my scripture reading for the day is taken from the book of St. Matthew's 26th chapter. And I'm going to read from the 26th chapter, the, the 34th verse down to the 41st verse. But I would suggest to you that in time, take the time to read all of the 26th chapter of Matthews. It tells you about the journey of Jesus. St. Matthews, the 26th chapter, the 34th through the 41st verse. And Jesus said unto him, speaking to Peter, because Peter was a little confused as to the things that Jesus was saying and demonstrating. And Jesus said unto him, 34th verse, Jesus said unto him, meaning Peter, Verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I shall die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all of the disciples, we're going to be with you regardless. We will never deny you. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Set ye here while I go and pray yonder. Jesus moving away from the crowd or his disciples to be alone to pray. And he took Peter with him and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Carry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it be awesome, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. And what we have to understand is this. On the spiritual path, as we are seeking spiritual growth and unfoldment, as Jesus said, whatever it is to be done, let it be done according to thy will, not my will. And this represents surrender to that God consciousness of the God spirit within us. We at our human level of understanding, we always want things to happen and to be as we want it to be, according to my will. This is the way that I want it. This is the way that it should be. But Jesus is saying, as it is said, the Son of God, he is saying to God, not my will. I Let this cup pass from me. But thy will be done in me and through me. Whatever it is that is the will of God within us, it is that which we must accept within ourselves. And it goes on to say, as he cometh unto the disciples and found them asleep, he said unto Peter, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And thus is scripture reading of St. Matthew's 
26th chapter, 34 through the 41st verse. Again, I say to you, good morning and blessings. What does this scripture say? Here was his disciples. And he asked them to watch while he go off a little ways and pray. But what happened? They fell asleep. They went to sleep. Here is the Son of God that has come down to save mankind. And he is saying to his disciples, those are his close ones, you know, the ones that he has shared everything, taught everything, as to how to elevate that consciousness within them. And Jesus was asking them something very simple. Watch. with me while I pray. Now, Jesus was also saying that his prayer, he was going into deep prayer, deep meditation, wherein he would not be aware of his outer surroundings. And his disciples were there to protect. Watch over him. You know, like, when a babe is in the bed and a mother stands and looks over, watches over her child while he's asleep, not aware of what's going on around them. Jesus was asking his disciples to watch over him. But they went to sleep. And you'll find throughout this time in the Garden of Gethsemane that several times they went to sleep. And what they were doing is within themselves, metaphysically, that Christ consciousness has spoken or nudged us To wake up, listen to my voice, and follow me. Be vigilant as to what's going on within you. Fall not asleep. But you know, I've come to know and to realize that there are people over the years that I've worked with that will come to church, will come to meditation classes that allow the spirit in a sense to be aroused within them is the Christ. But after a while, they've left meditation of the church and they have fallen asleep they've gone back into their old ways of doing things they have forgotten all about the Christ consciousness or that spiritual light within them they've fallen asleep they have focused their attention somewhere else outside of themselves, as opposed to staying committed and dedicated to that spirit within them. Because you're not going to find, and let's get this under, let's get this straight so you can understand this and know. You are not going to find the Christ consciousness outside of yourself.
you are not going to experience the Christ consciousness outside of yourself. And if there was a man walking up to you dressed in a robe and say, I am Jesus, you would look at him like he was crazy. You can't be Jesus. You are not the Jesus that I worship. You are not the Jesus that I know. Well, who is the Jesus that you know? Who is the Jesus that you worship? Jesus was a man just like you and I. But what distinguished him was the dawning or the coming forth of the Christ consciousness within him. And I have said for so many years that if you have not recognized the Christ within you, you are not going to see it in anyone else out in the world. And if you, blessed be the peace, I'm going to step on some toes here now. It's a good thing I'm on Zoom because you can't throw no books at me and everything. If we go through life looking for a man named Jesus that's coming to us from heaven down on the cloud, we're wasting our time. Because the man Jesus will never come back to you as we think. It is the Christ consciousness that was in the man Jesus that we are seeking to manifest, to bring forth and to demonstrate within ourselves. You see, the Christ conscious was not just in the body of one man, or one person. That Christ consciousness is within each and every one of us. But we have been so tempted by the world to look outside of ourselves that we've lost sight of the light of Christ that is within us. Did not Paul say to those that believe was given the power to become the sons and daughters of God? If you have the power to become the sons and daughters of God, then the Christ must be within you. Can't be anywhere else. Why are you continuing to look outside of yourselves? You know, many, many years ago, as scripture stated, and you hear some ministers teaching and preaching that Jesus would come on a cloud with all of his angels when we're least expected. He will appear in the sky with all of his angels. Well, basically, the sky represents that higher state of consciousness within you. But there were folks coming out of the church after the minister said, you know, Jesus is coming down on a cloud with all of his angels. Nobody's coming out of the church looking up in the sky to see if Jesus is there. No one is coming out of the church looking up in the sky to see if Jesus have come with all of his angels. They come out of the church going on about their business. Well, you know, the Reverend preached a good sermon today. He talked about the coming of Jesus and his angels. Jesus is coming down on a cloud. Yeah, well, we're waiting for him. 
but nobody's going out looking up at the sky to see if Jesus has come. Looking up represents lifting up our awareness to that higher state of consciousness within us. And the angels that comes with the Christ consciousness within us is that light of understanding. It's the peace and the joy and the power. If we are created in an image and likeness of God, then the Christ conscious must be within us, the power must be within us, and the spirit. The masses have lost their way because they are looking outside of themselves for something that they will never find. It is within that you will find and come to know the Christ. We are all children of God. And that which God gave to the man, Jesus, he has given to each and every one of us. But unless you turn within and be determined, faithfully committing yourself to know the truth of what you are, you will never, ever experience the Christ within you. This is the true meaning of Palm Sunday when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the mystical city. It is within the spiritual heart that is within you that is also known as the kingdom within you. And if the kingdom of heaven is within you, then where is God? God can only be but one place. And that is the very center of your being. The spiritual heart that is within you. For it is not the world that has given you life. It is not the world that maintains and sustains you. It is the light of God, the spirit of God, the consciousness of God, the Christ of God that permeates every fiber of your being. We have the ability and the power to turn within and access that kingdom within us. In St. Matthew's 26 chapter of the 41st verse it says watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation the things of the world they are the things that are, that are always attempting us and pulling us away from the very truth of what we should be focused on. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And it says, the spirit indeed is willing, 
But the flesh is weak. In other words, we have allowed the temptations of the flesh to dominate the spirit within us. The spirit that is willing to show forth. But we are allowing the things of the outer world that seems to be so desirable, entertaining, pleasurable, to override the calling of the spirit. We have fallen asleep. We have not allowed ourselves to stay awake, to watch, and to pray that the Christ consciousness will come forth and manifest and expressed in and through us and out into the outer world. This Palm Sunday, enter into the spiritual heart, the mystical city of Jerusalem that is within you. For the light of the Christ has now dawned upon you. Keep this light shining ever so brightly that it will not only be a blessing to you, but unto all of life. And so it is. Namaste.